Marvel's Spider-Man isn't just a video game, it's a triumph. It stands today as one of the best PlayStation exclusives ever with an insane amount of accolades and near perfect scores to back up this claim. As of the time of this recording, Spider-Man has surpassed over 33 million copies sold across both the PS4 and PS5 versions. It was nominated back in 2018 at the Game Awards for Best Audio Design, Best Action Adventure Game, Best Sound Direction, Best Studio and Game Direction, Best Narrative, Best Performance with Yuri Lowenthal playing Spider-Man and Peter Parker, and even a nomination for Game of the Year. In this video, I booted up Marvel Spider-Man for the first time in what felt like years and put on the Spidey suit once more for a swing around New York City to see if this game still holds up. And spoiler alert, it does. What up people of the internet? My name is Fuck to the Plug, and this is my Spider-Man revisit. Years later. Just to get it out there, I have to start off by saying that this video is strictly about my revisit of Marvel Spider-Man. I will not be talking about its spin-off Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, although I will make references to it as it is a big part of the narrative in the base game as well. And I will also talk about its three DLC add-ons as they pertain to the overall theme of this video. With the upcoming release of Marvel Spider-Man 2 and the very exciting announcement of a Marvel's Wolverine game, I thought what better time to revisit the game than right now. Now, I would like to start off by saying Spider-Man is one of the very few games I have platinum, so it's safe to say I am overqualified to talk about my experience with this game. I have to double down and say this isn't a traditional review. This video is simply communicating to you guys my experience then and my experience now. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the very first and most obvious thing I missed about this game is just genuinely how fun it is to swing around New York City. Running up buildings, diving off of them, and doing tricks made it feel so easy and natural. Now this was imperative to get right after the last Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 2 was the closest we had gotten some of the best web swinging mechanics at the time. So to double down on it, it's pretty obvious that swinging was a priority but I expect nothing less from the people that bought us the smooth parkour mechanics on Sunset Overdrive. In addition to the swinging, the combat feels so fluid and responsive, similar to that of the Batman Arkham games, with being able to switch back and forth between several enemies. I played this game on the hardest difficulty, and even with the revisit, it didn't take long for me to adjust back to the fighting controls, which I think is a compliment to the devs. The vibrant New York City streets combined with the tons and tons of Spider-Man and Marvel references scattered around the map makes it even more fun to just swing around and explore. In fact, in this revisit, that's really all I did was just swing around. It's even more fun to just, just swing with no real goal in mind. Um, I occasionally stop to fight some bad guys from stealing cars or kidnapping or stop some prisoners from setting Fish Street on fire. But other than that, I just enjoy my time with it. Now, like I touched on earlier, I received the Platinum Trophy for this, which goes hand in hand with the 100% completion of the game, which I also did. Uh, collecting every backpack, completing every photo opportunity, and Taskmaster Challenge, and gathering all the audio recordings never felt like a chore, but rather an enjoyable distraction. In fact, that's how I described a lot of optional activity in this game. Just uh, enjoyable distraction. <laughs> um, you'll go to your next main quest and see you have, you know, something pop up on the map while you're swinging down Manhattan, and you just stop and get it. And and it never really, it never really um, stops your progress in a way. You know, it 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 feels so natural, just like you you're swinging down to go to your next mission and then you see a little backpack icon and you go get it and you just go about your way and it never feels so, it never feels tedious or annoying it's, it really just does feel natural um yeah so a lot of the optional stuff is really enjoyable and I'm, I really love how they did it um at least in the context of the main story nothing feels dragged out or overly complicated even in the main story itself it's the main story is roughly 17 hours uh, but it doesn't feel like it, uh, and for 100% it's roughly like 40 plus hours, and for a game as fun and immersive as this one, having that many hours of additional content is nothing but a plus, and this isn't even including three post DLC uh, stories involving characters like Black Cat and Hammerhead, as well as some additional lore to Peter's detective partner Yuri. 
In the four years it took developing this game, there had to have been a lot of debates about which route they want to take with their Spider-Man in the context of this particular story. Making an older Peter definitely complements the game continuity and the world that they've built around the Spider-Man character. The duality between Peter Parker and Spider-Man was also something I felt was spot on, making both feel like two separate people with their own individual personas and problems. The wide variety of Spidey suits to choose from still blows my mind, even after a second playthrough. In the footage you're seeing, I am rocking the Raimi-inspired suit with, from the Tobey Maguire era, uh, but I'm also very fond of the Spider Armor Mark III suit, as it reminds me of uh, Jason Todd from the Under the Red Hood, and also the amount of detail and layering the suit has, it just looks really cool. The music is also a big thing in this game, it really nails the superhero sound, and hearing it in the background as you swing through New York again really makes you feel like Spider-Man. And it's not even something you're subconsciously thinking about, but it has another layer of immersion to your playing experiments. So to kind of wrap this video up, Spider-Man holds up exceptionally well, and I can only hope the sequel delivers well past our expectations. I go as far as to say Marvel Spider-Man is one of the best superhero games in the last decade, and will continue, and will continue to be held in high regard for years to come. So there you have it, guys. This was my uh, Spider-Man revisit. And yeah, j just to kind of go off script here, I mean... It really was uh, really fun to dive back in. Uh, like I said, I played this game two, maybe three times on the hardest difficulty. Uh, beat all of the post-launch DLC on the hardest difficulty. Uh, and just overall, just had a lot of fun with it. You know, I think that's what superhero games are all about. And whether it be the Arkham games, whether it be Spider-Man, whether it be the Avengers game or any upcoming superhero games like I mentioned earlier, the Wolverine game, which I am extensively excited about. Um, this video was really fun to make. I had this video sitting in my files for a really long time, and to finally get it out there to you guys, I'm really excited. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about how you feel about Spider-Man. Again, it's one of the best games I've ever played. Um, I feel stupid not getting it at launch. It is one of those games I didn't have when it first came out, but a stat I didn't mention earlier in the video was I think, and someone correct me on this, but didn't it sell like 3 million copies in its first weekend or some crazy number like that, you know? Um, but it, it, it just goes to show that like fans, even with a, a developing studio like Insomniac, it, it we, we tr like, we trust them now. Like, I feel like for those who weren't familiar with their password this is the game that will kind of well that did kind of elevate them to trustworthy dev status and promoting triple a superhero and action adventure games uh, for the future and this game like i said I, I beat it all the way through three times just because it really is fun to hop back into it um, playing it again for this revisit video I was really excited just to make this video. It's like my homework was to play the Spider-Man game, which was, you know, I'm not going to say no to that. It honestly is. And, you know, when you 100% when you it and you unlock all the gadgets, all the gear, um, and you just kind of play around with it, like, I literally have all the outfits, all the gear unlocked, all the, you know, the, the upgrade trees. I have everything, you know. And the same goes for Spider-Man Miles Morales, which, by the way, let me know down in the comments if you guys want a video about that whether it be uh tricks maybe i live stream the story again or just again a video like this where i revisit it again and compare how i felt from then to now uh sorry if this didn't feel like a traditional review i did tell you guys it wasn't going to be uh but i, I really do i really am curious how you guys feel about uh spider-man uh marvel spider-man uh, for the PlayStation and is it one of your favorite superhero games is it your favorite game of all time how do you feel about it what did I talk about that you didn't agree with and what you did agree with what could have game what could have what could sorry what could this game have done better and would you like to see that in the next Spider-Man game are you guys excited for the next Spider-Man game are you guys excited for the next Wolverine game um, all this stuff I want to see answered down in the comment section below but again I thank you guys for watching this video if you did like it, leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And until my next video, I will see you guys when I see you guys. By the way, if you've made it this far, the next type of video I'm putting out, it's going to be a Kirby video. So stay tuned for that. Should I be pretty fun. All right, guys. Later. Thanks for watching.